These types of videos are for people who love chess but cannot spend a lot of their time watching excellent commentary from grandmasters like Papa Iano. I've taken out his highlights and put them into a video along with some of my own explanations to share with the viewers, to share with the world Papa's wisdom. Hello everyone, it is William here coming at you with another chess video. These are some of the lessons that I have learned from Papa Iano. Number 9. Reversed Systems Galore. Yes, and now the, the white played d4. This is a reversed green plate. Or yes. then it, we entered the Catalan, but instead of d4, the white can of course play short castle instead of d4. Short castle. And this is a reversed King's India. E5. Uh, we play e5, d3. And now, in my opinion, black has already committed a small mistake by entering a sharp position with a tempo less. So from all the lines that uh, it are available for white, because black here is, uh, is like he is white, from all the available plans he should choose a very solid setup with a tempo less if he choose a very solid setup then this tempo may not be of so important such an important so the best move for black here will probably be f6 this is a reversed zemis where the tempo is important but maybe not so much important if and uh, what black if black who is playing as white now doesn't choose the sharpest variation but a more solid uh, yes. approach let's take back this move f6 and let's find the worst move for black here what is the worst possible move because a5 is very bad yes but it's not possible well, queen h4 looks very bad yes <laughs> what is the worst possible move here worst possible normal move, move yes is to play as sharp as possible with the tempo ah, less f5, f5 is yeah. the worst move you play the four pawns attack with the tempo less most likely you will lose all four pawns some players would say that it's the worst move even in the reverse position. even in the reverse yes yes <laughs> yes so uh, here white has very good chances because in sharp uh, the, the more sharp the position gets the more important is the uh, tempo that we have more so that's why uh, Black came to his senses and played e6, very solid line of, of reverse Greyfield. So let's go. And now look. Uh, once again, Black is a tempo less in a, a reverse system. The worst he can do is choose a very aggressive setup. So, for example, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and e5. This is a very aggressive setup, but we take uh, yes, but the tempo less will be very important here. C4 and Bishop e7, white is clearly better here because c takes d5, c takes d5, knight c3, bishop e6 for example, and bishop g5, and now everything is hanging. Uh, in normal theory, black has already castled, which yes. means white has already castled. Uh, having castled or not having castled in one position in an opening is a huge, makes a huge difference. Here, for so, example, queen a4 check would be yes, a all this. Yes, and and the only question is how, how better is white here, yes. how much better. So, black has to play a very solid move and avoid direct combat. Contact and he plays this e6 and now c4 is the best move you can number 10 when to bluff in chess so let's talk about uh, we can assume that black is prepared yes let's talk now about something very important about bluffs in chess so white here is a taking he has 41 minutes is it possible that he is bluffing or is it not possible that he is bluffing when should we bluff in chess especially in the opening we mean and when not uh, Let's explain all this to the amateur players and to the experienced players as well. So, uh, should we bluff in chess or not? I will tell you that there is no very specific answer. It depends on uh, your character as a person. But I would say that when amateurs are playing, bluffing in chess, which means thinking a lot, for example, in a position where you already know some theory and even better in a position where you have a very interesting idea in mind and you wish to reach this position and then all of a sudden start playing fast and clearly show your opponent that he was caught in preparation. Is this good in amateur chess? Yes, this is, I believe, very interesting. The general rule in amateur chess is when we know something in the opening and we have a very nice idea, we play fast and we try to look uh, Confident. No, no, uh -huh. we play uh, uh, when we know something, sorry, we play slow and we, uh, when we know something, we try to confuse the opponent and we play so and we try to look not confident at all. When we don't know, if we start thinking, you know, and cursing ourselves, ourselves and doing this move with our head, which I have seen a million times, then we help the opponent. We help yes. you. We, we give him valuable information, yes. information, of course, of course. So uh, every time, time, yes, every time, I mean, I repeat it, amateurs, yes, every time we should do the accurate, uh, sorry, the opposite uh, thing than reality, which means when we have a bad position, we try to play a little bit fast and confident. When we have a very good position and we know it, we think and we pretend that we don't know anything. But in grandmaster level, this hardly ever works because more or less we all know each other and we know that everybody is studying and everybody almost every time knows some theory. So 
don't try to bluff in Grandmaster level, it would be meaningless. I mean, I'm 99% sure that Arian Tar is not bluffing here. He Obviously, doesn't have yes. a tremendous novelty. He doesn't have, and he's thinking because he doesn't know this uh, is the, the position. This, here. Yes. This, this is the influence of, uh, of if, the computers yes, uh, in if, opening preparation. If Arian Tar knew the correct move here and he had a very strong move, he would have played it immediately. Yes, first of all, because he would, after checking with the computer, he would be pretty confident that yes, it's a yes. strong move. Also, and, and secondly, because white would know and black would also know that they are professional players and uh, exa- bluffing and all this. Ideas. Exactly. Vidit has obviously studied this position at home. He has checked it with the computer, mm-hmm. so he knows that there is nothing disastrous mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. a little improvement, but mm-hmm. nothing disastrous. So but nothing of this is grounded so in, in amateur player. Obviously. In amateur play. So in amateur play, in my humble opinion, uh, one should bluff in the way we have explained. Okay. So, okay, let's wait to see what Arian will come up with. Let's actually move to the next... Number 11. Play the anti-Dutch against the Dutch. So, if you intend to study the Dutch defense, please be my guest. It is an interesting opening, really, very risky and active. It is of the same uh, value with the Benoni, objectively slightly worse than the very strong openings, but equally interesting or even more interesting. But if you want to study the Dutch defense, uh, you want to study for 10 hours, let's say, you should devote from these 10 hours eight and a half hours to the anti-Dutch systems and the rest only to the main line because Things I see like the following mistake like this yes everybody's Gambit studying or... main line for many moves every amateur play, uh, player and he never gets it on the board and he gets crushed within a few moves yes. with all these very dangerous uh, anti-Dutch systems mm-hmm. so uh, knowing, knowing the... perfectly the anti-Dutch systems and a little bit of main line which is not, you're not going to have it anyway, just a little bit of main line uh, of, of uh, the Leningrad variation, for example. You are never going to get main line uh, if you're an amateur player because all these possibilities are actually better. In my opinion, the move bishop g5 is objectively the best move in this position, much better than g3 or c4. This, this is the best move. Kasparov have- Here we have a funny moment about Papa thinking about giving up chess. Very much more. Uh, Happy to see him. Uh... Chess is a disease which you, you, you will not uh, forget or dismiss so easily. Trust me, I know. I was ready to abandon chess many times in my life, and in the end, here I am. <laughs> yes. So, e6, knight c3, so... d5. Number 12, Berlin subtlety. 4 versus 3 on the king side is not winning because of this reason. The, many of the conclusions have changed after Grandmaster started studying the. Yes, uh, after the, the Berlin, the Berlin defense. Uh, yes, what has changed? The, the impression that when I have four against three, uh, right here, and you have double pawns on the other side, I'm winning. No, uh, or I'm much better. No, no, no. Uh, black can control the situation on the other side, especially since the pawn on it's on e5. White would rather have the pawn on e4 to control the light squares uh, very well. On e5, we see we feel some holes, some weak points on the light squares. And yeah, here, uh, for example, it's D5. very difficult for white to start pushing his pawns and uh, promoting to a queen. And on the other hand, black with four against three, even though these pawns are doubled and at this game blocked, still it's having four pawns against, uh, it's not the same as having three pawns. Yes. So black Actually, has here, half advantage on the yes. queen side. Much later, maybe he can push c5 of and course, get rid of this course. particular yes, uh, yes, structure. Yes. So, okay, let's go. Number 13, Catalan compensation. Put the bishop on d2 or b2. As we said before, forced to take. Uh, this pawn. Otherwise, he will be worst without uh, a fight. So this is absolutely out of the question. So black takes on b3, a, b3, a takes b3, and white has a good control of e5 square and counterplay along the c line. c6 square is uh, weak and c5 square is weak. c5 uh, and also the pawn yes, on e6. Yes, yes, exactly. Point. So bishop uh, uh, d6, bishop b2, queen e7. You know, this variation barely existed a few years ago. Yes. And now it is very fashionable. Knight e5 is probably the best move. Also, ideas with knight e1 are pretty much playable, but the knight a very good, d3. Yes, yes, a very good square for the knight is to go to d3. Instead of bishop b2, actually knight e1 is maybe an even better move. I don't remember. Ah, and the, the, an, another very interesting possibility is instead of bishop b2, a very strange move, bishop to d2. But no, this happens when when black's bishop goes, goes to e7. The meaning of the of okay, after so bishop e7, I think a very good move is bishop to d2. The idea is to play fast rook c1 and attack the knight. But another idea is that when black goes knight b4, now what, uh, for example, let's not play this immediately. Let's castle first and rook c1, bishop uh, knight b4. Bishop takes b4, that's why I put it on d2. And now knight e5 intending to go to c6. Uh-huh. Or after rook c1, let's try another move. Let's try bishop to b7, and now white goes knight e1, which is the most typical idea in this position, knight b4. 
Bishop takes b7. Uh, oh, bishop sure, takes sure, b7 sure. first, rook takes b7, yeah. bishop takes b4, bishop takes b4, and now both rook takes a6 is slightly better for white, and knight d3, although it allows a5, still it's slightly better for white, but rook takes a6 is the best move. Okay. Yes, now white is threatening knight d3, maybe black should take this knight. Yes. Uh, and queen takes, and white is slightly better because c7 and b5 uh, are, are uh, weak, and white is, as, as always, in the Catalan, ready to play a very long game, putting s slow pressure and pressure, and because the Catalan is married to the end game. Okay. So this is the idea behind bishop d2, to be able to take a knight on which will appear on b4. So knight d5 was played here, yes. knight to b4. And knight c6, this I have never seen in my life, this idea. Okay, forcing this exchange. Yes. Knight to d7. It may be interesting. Uh, I guess after bishop d7, a6 will yes. uh, drop, mm -hmm. so knight to d7. And, and f4 is an interesting idea. White is trying to prevent yes. uh, black from uh, breaking black in the center. Death. And now we have another funny moment from Papa. Somehow, in these variations after d takes c4, for a reason that I don't understand, I have a really great score, a really fantastic score. It's not that I know theory, maybe I got very lucky several times. If you check my score, if it was only for this variation, I would have a rating like 28, 50 or something. Maybe yes. the, the type of yes. position yes. suits yes. you. And I would be playing with, with Carlos and not with Caruana a match, but only in these specific positions. Uh -huh. So, uh, Queen e2 first to, to provoke b5. Let's uh, switch back to the chessboard. Yes, b5. And now Thank you so much for watching, if you like this video format, leave a comment below. Click the Williams Chess channel icon to subscribe to this channel. Plus, check out all the other videos I know you'll love too. Until next time.